Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away And all the overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God How is your foe still your love far for me? And you have been so, so good to me. When I felt nowhere, God, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind to me. And all oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away And all the overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God Yeah No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the land in none. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love.
seated for just a moment. My name is Travis Rutland. I'm the pastor here at Restoration Church. I'm so glad that you've joined us for the night of worship. We're excited about this evening. I want to give you a couple of things to make you aware of as we, uh, as we move forward in the service. The first is that we have communion on both of these tables, and you're welcome to receive communion at any time during the service. So there's no particular moment that you need to do that at all. So I hope that you will take an opportunity to come forward. You can receive communion, take it back to your seats. You can come up here to the front, receive communion at the altar, but I hope that you will take advantage of communion. Uh, in addition to that, there are some pieces of cloth that I'm going to talk more about later on, but these are at the front, and I'm going to talk more about them, but I just want you to see those at the front, and uh, I'm going to give you some more instructions on those uh, later in the evening. Uh, the final thing is this. Our prayer team is here, and if you have a prayer need, what we're going to say tonight is if you come to the front, if you'll simply raise your hand, one of the members of our prayer team will come and, and pray with you. Um, at night of worship, it's very fluid. It's very flowing. So there's a lot of times when somebody just wants to pray by themselves or you're receiving communion or something like that. But if you specifically have someone that wants to pray, that you want someone to pray with you, intercede with you, believe with you for some prayer request, I hope that you will just simply raise your hand and one of our prayer members will come and pray with you. This is going to be an awesome, amazing, worship-filled evening. And I'm so thrilled and excited that you are here. So if you will, stand with me. I'm going to pray over this evening and then our worship team is going to continue to lead us. God, I thank you for every life, for every person. And God, we surrender any preconceived notions or agendas to you. We surrender it to you right now. You do whatever you want to do in this place. We are submissive to your sovereign will. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Move in this place. Move among us corporately, but move in each of us individually. We welcome the sweet, sweet spirit of you, your spirit. Say then you moved on the face of the deep. Your spirit in the Old Testament, the spirit filling people in the New Testament. Let your Holy Spirit move among us this evening. We love you and we welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See 
your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells. Yeah. Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere.
on, this is the air. This is the air I breathe. Can you say it? This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is. your touch and your love our soul finds rest in you tonight Thank you. 
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I for you and not to harm you. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. You are chosen, not forsaken. says we are not who the devil says we are your sons and your daughters the righteousness of God in Christ
could stop the Lord Almighty? Who could stop the Lord Almighty? Who could stop the Lord Almighty? Who could stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it over the battle. Who could stop the Lord Almighty? Who could stop the Lord? Jesus, we declare your glory in this place tonight, your majesty, your power, oh God.
what you're doing in this place. Just continue to move among us. We love you. We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, please be seated if you can. Well, we're going to get back to worship in just a second, but I, I just want to share a, a thought with you this evening very quickly. I had a wonderful time. The musicians are going to return in just a moment. But we were praying about the idea, the theme for this night, the idea of, of prayer, of, of covering. So I want to just talk to you for a moment. There are going to be moments in life that are terrible. There are going to be moments in life that are awful. All of us face pain and suffering and difficulty. There's a great line in a great movie called The Princess Bride. <laughs> and the, the princess character is talking to somebody else and she says, you, you're mocking my pain. And he says, life is pain. Anyone that tells you differently is selling you something. I got news for you. It's right. Life is pain. Now you're sitting there thinking to yourself, this is a little bit of a letdown from what we just experienced with praise and worship. Trust me, I'm getting, I know where I'm going. You may not see it yet, but I know where I'm going. It is pain, and there is pain, and it is painful. But there is something that we see in both the Old and New Testament that God shows us in those moments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna show you four different passages very quickly. The first is from Psalm 133 and verse two. It's gonna come on the screen. The writer of this psalm is talking about oil being poured on the head of someone. It says, it's like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down to the edge of his garments. There is an interesting, uh, there's an interesting word picture there. The concentration of the oil, the concentration of the the spirit and the presence of God is the greatest at the lowest point. The concentration of the spirit isn't the greatest on the head. It's not the greatest on the beard. It's the greatest when it's way down at the edge of the priest's garments. The same thing holds true in the physical world. The Dead Sea in Israel that I've been to many times is the lowest point on earth. The Dead Sea is also dead because nothing can grow in it, because the concentration of minerals. Water flows in and it doesn't flow out. So even in the spiritual world, the, the, even in the physical world, we have a metaphor for the spiritual world. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on earth and it also the greatest concentration of minerals. You can float in the Dead Sea without doing anything. You can just float there because the concentration of minerals is so high. So at those terrible, awful moments. See, here's the problem with being a Christian. We are not really promised to float through life. Where nothing touches us and nothing hurts us and nothing comes against us. Even in difficult moments when we receive a miracle, the miracle is temporary. I can prove it to you. Lazarus is not alive. Even the miracles that Jesus himself did were temporary. The 5,000 people that Jesus fed, the next day they were hungry again. We are not promised this moment where nothing happens to us, nothing happens to people we love, nothing happens to people we care about. So what can we say in those moments what we know is that the concentration of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God is the greatest in those moments. So that gives us some level of comfort, but there has to be something else, right? So look in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Joseph is speaking to his brothers who had sold him into slavery in Egypt. 
And they are worried now that their father is dead. Remember Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Jacob has died. And the brothers have convinced themselves that now that Jacob's dead, Joseph is going to kill them for all of their past sins. And Joseph says to his own brothers, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. It may be that in your moment of suffering, God is actually doing something in the people around you. When Joseph was in a pit, when Joseph was in prison, when Joseph was in slavery, when Joseph was falsely accused, there was no way that he could ever have thought to himself or understood that, that his suffering was going to bring about the salvation of all of the people of Israel. All of his relatives and extended family were going to be saved because of his suffering. So the concentration of God's presence is the greatest when we're at our lowest. But there also may be something that God is doing in the lives of other people through things that we go through that we don't even realize, that we don't even know at the time. So that again gives us encouragement. But now look in the New Testament at James chapter 1 and verse 2. James is, any of you that attend this church know, is my favorite book of the Bible. James, the brother of Jesus, is writing and he says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Doesn't sound like it, but okay. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And here's the key verse. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. How does perfection come to pass in our life? Through trials, through suffering, through the low moments. I'm telling you this because I have experienced lowest of lows. Disappointment by people that I love. Betrayal by people that I could, thought I could count on. You've heard the stories, the horror stories of previous churches that I've pastored. We've been through it with our kids. We've been through it in our marriage. And I am telling you this, it's a fact. You learn more about who you are and who God is in you in the desert than you do on the mountaintop. That is real and true. The trials produce patience and the patience helps us become complete, perfect. That's what we're trying to be. We're all, you know, we're all wanting to be a complete circle, whole. When we talk about God as a holy God, it means that nothing can be added or taken away from him to make him any more God-like. He is holy, complete. That is what we all want. God even says it. You shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. How can we get there? One of the main ways we get there is trusting God through the really awful moments. But even then, we need something else. And we find it in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. Moses and the children of Israel have just fought the Amalekites. And Moses builds an altar to celebrate God's victory over the Amalekites. And he calls its name Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Amen. The Lord is my covering. The Lord is my refuge. And this is the verse that you can hold on to in the most terrible of moments. No matter what I am going through, I know that I serve Jehovah Nisi. Amen. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my covering. The lowest points often have the greatest concentration. The lowest points produce wonderful things in the lives of others that we don't realize. The lowest points help us to become complete. And the reason that we can make it through the lowest points is because we serve Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my covering. The Lord is my refuge. In terrible times, in wonderful times, in deserts, in valleys, in mountaintops, in caves, in best and in worst, Jehovah Nisi never changes. The Lord is my banner. Now, in just a moment, the musicians are going to return to the stage. And I want to come back to this. 
our creative arts team and our prayer team have worked these up. These are simple little pieces of cloth. I want to make it clear, I said this on Wednesday. I am not a tele-evangelist telling you that if you take this home, God is going to give you $10,000 tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> That's not what's happening. Put this on your Bible and tomorrow you'll find gold in your backyard. That's not what's happening here, okay? <laughs> All right? What this is... I don't know how many of you remember uh, a night of worship we did several years ago, but uh, Mark McKay, our creative arts director, had small stones, rocks, to remind us of what the theme was that night. I still have that rock on my desk. The idea is the same here. It's not anything mystical or magical about this. It is. When you get that terrible phone call, when you get the awful news, when something in your life happens and you say, I can't make it through. This is the thing that breaks me. Listen to me. We serve Jehovah Nisi. We serve Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner, my refuge, my covering. I want you to pull this out and remember that verse. We serve Jehovah Nisi. No matter what comes against you, no matter what forces of Satan, no matter what the world throws against you, you build your altar and you say, I know who I have believed. We serve Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my covering. I'm going to invite the musicians and the singers to return to the stage. We're going to sing a few more songs. If you haven't received communion yet, I invite you to do that as we close this night of worship. If you haven't grabbed one of these, get one now or get one at the end of service. If you want to come and pray, whatever it is you want to do. But as I say this prayer and we sing these final few songs, remember this. Night of worship is always fun. Night of worship is always great. Night of worship is always full of praise and wonderful and awesome. It's not always night of worship. There's other more difficult, more destructive moments. In those times, in those times of death and disease and suffering and pain, in those moments, remember the words of Moses. We serve Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is our banner. The Lord is our covering. The Lord is our refuge. Let's pray. God, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you all over the house. As we enter into this final moment and time of worship tonight, help all of us to remember, while these times are wonderful and encouraging to our soul, there will be valleys ahead. There will be dark caves ahead. There will be moments of pain. Help us to always remember that you walk through it with us you love us and that your banner is always above us. You are our covering. You are our refuge. You are Jehovah Nisi. In the name of your son we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Receive communion, pray, worship, whatever you want to do. But let's worship God right now.
at the feet of Jesus. Carry it on, but your heart was tired. Feel the worst and felt the fire. Lay it on down. Lay it on down. Filled with all those anxious thoughts And your doubts became your guide Lay it on down Lay, Lay it on down At the feet of Jesus At the feet of Jesus
reeks from the mount I felt you there in the valley below I see your love and your mercy You're guiding me home You're in every season. I feel your hand bringing peace and control. Jesus, your love is my anchor. You're my only hope. You're my only hope. I will trust in.
Um, sorry, guys. Give me a second. Uh, 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 we're supposed to close right here, but um, I feel really grieved in my spirit over something. And I'm just going to ask y'all to do that one more time. Travis was so spot on with what he said tonight. Um, you know, we found out a couple months ago, or about a month or so ago, that Megan was pregnant. And then, you know, every time something like that happens in your life, you start to go back through your life. Are we ready for another child? Are we ready for um, this next step? Am I ready to be responsible for another human being? And you start to question, am I who I need to be as a man to lead my wife and three kids? And then you start to wonder, am I strong enough? Do I have enough in me? Do I know? And then you start back, the devil starts playing that, that thought in your mind of all your faults and all the times you fell and all the times you failed. But for every one of those moments, there's also a moment of glory that shortly there followed. That was a moment of victory. There was a moment where I went from the valley to the mountaintop and it wasn't me. And you look back and you can see the hand, the divine hand of God working in your life and in every situation. And then you start to remember if I wasn't ready for it, God wouldn't have given it to me. I, may, I don't have the strength inside of me, but as long as I keep my eyes on the cross, I have everything I need. I feel like somebody here tonight is holding on just about this far from receiving the hope and strength that you need for whatever you got going on in your life. I don't know what that is. I just feel like somebody is holding back and you are this close and believe me, I may be young, but I have been through the valleys and I know for a fact that you see how big God is in those moments and it changes your life forever. Like Travis said, it may not mean you'll never have another struggle again, but let me tell you, your hope and your idea of, who, of how big God is, you realize how small you are, how big he is, and how much his love goes through your life from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Listen, if Jesus is present in your life and his anointing is on your life and you are in the will of God, there is nothing the devil himself himself can do to stop you or tear you down because at the end of the day you already have victory and if you already have victory then you have hope you have hope if you are if you have hope you already have victory they go hand in hand if you are struggling with something tonight let me tell you God is bigger you are already victorious no matter what the smoke the devil is putting in front of your eyes, you have already won. For we are conquerors. In his spirit, there is freedom. Come to these altars. Let the chains fall. Let the devil be found dumb and let him be found victorious. In this atmosphere, that can happen. I'm going to ask for one more song from the praise team. I know we've been here a long time, but listen, there's a prayer team ready to pray with you. I'll be down here to pray with you. There's a, the whole church will pray with you. Do not leave here the way you came in Jesus' name. Amen.
Convince Luke to stay and sing for you. <laughs> Listen, we serve Jehovah Nisi, God of our banner. He's the Lord of our banner. He protects us everywhere we go. Carry that with you in your spirit. If you needed to come and pray and you didn't, or we have a wonderful prayer team here that are ready to pray with you afterward, anywhere you want to go, they'll pray with you. This church, we're here for you. Restoration loves you. 
we are a church that loves people and we love praying with people and we love to see people become victorious in the situations of their life. We celebrate that with you. We are here for you, church, if you need us. I'm gonna pray. The band's gonna play on the way out. Please stay and pray as long as you like. We're here for you. Uh, all those already praying can pray as long as they need. Let's go to the Father. Lord, we thank you for tonight, God. Lord, we thank you for your spirit in this place, God. Lord, we thank you for visiting with us, God. Lord, we know we can just feel you in this house right now, Father, Lord. And we want to thank you for the victory of this service, God, because somebody got touched tonight, Father, and only you could do that, Father. Lord, we don't give the devil any power in this place, God. We give it all to you. This is your house. This is your service. And all things that were said and done here tonight are for you, Father. Lord, they all go to your kingdom and to your glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for anybody here who needed you and didn't quite step out, that didn't reach out tonight, Father. Lord, I pray that you're, you go with them, that your Holy Spirit would travel home with them and that you would touch them in the wee hours of the night, God, Lord, that they would wake up renewed and refreshed and a new child of you, God. Lord, I pray that right now. And God, I also pray for anybody who's here who doesn't know you tonight as their personal Savior, Father. Lord, I pray that they wouldn't leave this house until they get that settled, God, because we're not promised tomorrow, Father, but in you we are promised forever in glory with you of life. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all things that were said and done here tonight. God, keep us safe and bring us back together on Sunday. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We won't be silent, hearts on fire. Jesus, our victory, the sound of triumph. Thank you.